Hello. One of the biggest questions I get is, how do you make your videos? And I think that this process is a little intimidating for those people who are just getting started or are interested in blending or flipping, but are not quite sure how much time and energy they want to invest in it. Also, for people who are maybe a little bit more hesitant with technology, it can seem pretty overwhelming. So I'm going to go ahead and show you how I make my videos. Uh, specifically, what I'm talking about is a video where you see my presentation in the background and you see little old me down there in the corner talking to you. There are lots of different ways that you can create videos for blending and flipping. This is just one of them. My co-teacher, Wendy Potton, is going to show you how she does her videos using Smart Notebook. So here's what I do. First of all, I start off with uh, some equipment that you're going to need if you want these videos to look like this. First of all, you need a webcam if you want to see your smiling face. Uh, my webcam has a built-in microphone. You could also use one that has a separate microphone. You'll need some sort of computer, laptop, or tablet in order to present on. I have an interactive pen tablet. It's like this. Wacom. It's kind of like the old smart slates. It allows me to use it as a mouse. Also allows me to use a pen function so I can write to my students on there like this. Hello. But, uh, the, let's just get rid of that and get back to me. Um, also, you're going to need some sort of software if you want to screencast. And screencast means that you're recording what you see on the computer screen while you're recording your video. Smart Recorder does this, which Wendy will show you. I personally use Screencast-O-Matic. They have a free version, which is pretty good. I also They also have a subscription version that you can buy. There are many, 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 many others. If you want to use your iPad, for example, there are apps galore out there, some cheaper and freer than others. There are many other uh, desktop software also. Camtasia, for example, is a popular one. This one I use, uh, it was recommended to me by some people that I met uh, that have been using it. So it's pretty simple and I like it. One piece of advice that I can't emphasize enough is that you should keep the videos simple. Now, if you are really techie and you're into video recording and all of that, go for it. You get on YouTube, you see the craziest videos. You got green screens and people with all kinds of special effects. If that's your kind of thing, perfect. I know me personally is I don't have time for that and I I'm not that type of person. I like to keep mine pretty straightforward and simple. So some things that you can do, minimize special effects. It turns out it's mostly just distracting for the students. You know that when you see some of their PowerPoints that they do. Uh, also, uh, a lot of people have said that music in the background is distracting. If you want a little at the beginning and the end for transition, that tends to be okay, but uh, students say that they're distracted by music that's in the background. Green screens, I say let Hollywood keep them too much energy and work and time for me. It's up to you if that's something you're interested in. Also, I suggest keeping editing to a minimum. I rarely edit my videos, at least not very much. Sometimes I re-record them if I really make a big mistake, but I find that the students like it. They like to see that it's really me there talking and there's not a lot of um, bells and whistles and I didn't go through and make it perfect. They like to see my mistakes. And then also I recommend stay within your comfort level. If Smart Notebook is your comfort level, start with that. If you're okay with people seeing your face, go for it. Keep it as simple and as comfortable as you can. You're more likely to stick with it. If you make it complicated and uncomfortable, you're going to give it up because it's too much work. So I'm just going to quickly walk you through uh, the procedure and what I do for making my videos. Um, one thing I want to point out is that I do use my pre-existing presentations that I've made in the past years, like using a smart notebook or Google Slides or PowerPoint. So I don't make anything new and fresh for these. They, they can use your own software or your own programs. And also I have found that using YouTube is way easier than linking the videos straight into Canvas. Find that the students have an easier time accessing it and 
I don't run into as many hiccups and I'll show you what I do there in a minute. It's pretty easy. So first I'm just going to go ahead and exit out of this so you can see how I do this. One thing with the screencasting software is it just records what I have in the in the frame. So I'm going to open and it's it doesn't like it very much when I do this but I'm going to open my screencast-o-matic and of course it's showing me that I'm recording. This is what it looks like. And then I can go ahead and just press record. It's not going to let me because it's already recording. But normally that's what I can do. So I'm just going to pull up another video that I made earlier today. And this is my introduction. So once you make a video, you do have some options. It just records what you do on screen. And then you can play it back upload it to Screencast-O-Matic, which I don't usually do. I save mine as a video file and then upload it to, to YouTube. You do have some editing options through Screencast-O-Matic. Like I said, I don't use very many of them, but you can do some things like narrating over your video or you know, speeding it up, slowing it down, inserting things. It can be kind of fancy if you want, but I say take it, take it slow and, and start with simple. Once I have a video, I save it to my, nope, I do not want to do that. So I'm just going to minimize this. Um, I save it to my computer and upload it to YouTube. I do have my own YouTube channel, which I have had to change a little bit after, last year after they changed the privacy settings for, um, for what students can access on YouTube, but that's okay. I go ahead and upload it which is actually a pretty uh, simple process. We're not going to go through the whole process, but uploading the video to YouTube. And then creating the video for them, for the students to see, is as simple as making an assignment in Canvas. So if you've done that, it's pretty straightforward. Just I'm just going to create a new assignment here. And then I'll just use, I'm going to use a old, old video here and get that link. I'll just use this one. Oh, Oop, but you don't have to watch it. And then you can just link that. Here's the video. Oops. Link. Link. And it'll be embedded for your students to see. So I find it's a lot easier. The students, once they know that you have a YouTube channel, they can just access the channel itself. It's been a lot more streamlined than actually um, uh, posting them just in Canvas. So that's what I do. It's pretty simple, very uh, low, low budget, B-movie style videos, but the students seem to really appreciate them. They really like that they can pause and replay them, watch them anytime, anywhere, and they really like also that it's me talking to them and not some other YouTube guru. So I hope you liked it and let me know if you have any questions. I'm happy to answer.